Huh. Hello? <laughs> well, well, well. Looks like we meet again, traveler. Excuse me? Is it real though? Are you can I uh, just go up to him and start patting his face? Hello? Bow before the abyss! Bow before the abyss! Oh, you think? You thought? You think you stink, dude? Oh, you're exploding now! Here we go! Wait, what? Why are you taking no damage? That's not fair. What do you mean, no? He's taking no damage. Oh. Skill issue. <laughs> Traveler, though you may have managed to avert countless crises before, your good fortune was bound to end sooner or later. It's time you realize how weak and powerless you really are. My journey will not end here. I must find my sister. Your sister. <laughs> Traveler, are you really so ignorant? Or are you just living in complete denial? He's not real. He's not real. They mentioned something about having a poor mental state before. He's not real. Her Highness has long since forsaken you. Your meager existence in her eyes is that of an annoying bug, only to be stepped upon. Now he's lying! You're lying! The bonds of love and family which drive you to find your sibling are utterly gone. Your journey is meaningless. But don't you fret now. Today will be your last. Now die! No, you. Uh... What was all that just now? Strange, it's, it feels like I was just dreaming for, there for a moment, but I can't remember what I saw. Hmm. What do we do? We haven't seen Hapatia anywhere out here. Oh, there she is! Quick, let's see how she's doing. Ah, oh, so sweet. Mm. Well, the good news is that she's still conscious. Hey, why'd you drop her food on the floor like that? Uh, sorry, I uh, kind of zoned out there for a second. Oh, guess that makes sense. She does look kind of rough at the moment. Anyways, we can talk about this later. We better make sure she's alright first. Yeah. So did we just, like, imagine that in, like, a few seconds? Because Paimon... Whoa, wait a sec. Look at all this fruit lying around her. We can put that to good use. Right. Yeah. Okay. Either Paimon was gone for quite a while, or that happened really quickly in our, like, like we zoned out and it happened quite quickly. Uh, who is there? Hello? Tainari, is that you? Uh, it's not me. It's, it's, it's not me. It's him. And it's me. No, not him. It's not me. It, it's me. Hello. <laughs> uh -huh. Hi. It's okay. You can relax, Hapatia. Tainari sent us here to bring you some food and water. Here, we have a letter that he asked us to give you. How does anyone in in Sumeru think Paimon is real? If everyone is tripping like this, she's like... Am I still tripping? <laughs> we gave her the letter. Okay. Is Sumeru I even see. real? So, you're friends of Tainari. I apologize for all the trouble I've caused you. I'm grateful that you came so quickly to save me. You even brought all this fruit. Uh, well, actually, we didn't bring the fruit. It was already here when we arrived. We were kind of wondering about that, actually. When we found you here, there was all this fruit lying around and even some juice dripping from your lips. Uh, how did you end up like this anyway? Okay, so I'm guessing that little jelly bean that we saw earlier saved her. Maybe it's like a guardian of the forest or something. Oh, really? 
Hmm, I seem to understand now. All the fruit was likely from my, uh, neighbor. Right. Must have come by and saw me like this. Your neighbor? You mean there's someone else living nearby? Yeah. Is it a little round creature? Kind of like a cabbage. Oh? So you're able to see them too? What is this, Stardew Valley? Hello? We told them what happened, okay. Wait, hold on a second, Traveler. You say that before we arrived, you saw some mysterious creature and suddenly had a strange dream? Isn't that a little too crazy to believe? No, I actually do believe what the Traveler is saying. I myself had a similar experience once before and ended up scaring my timid little neighbor here. You needn't worry. They mean you no harm. They only dragged you into the dream because they hoped to buy themselves a little time in order to scurry away. So, Hypatia, just what kind of creature is your neighbor exactly? I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest. But I do know that they have some sort of deeper connection with the Dendro Archon. Right. I know this because the first time I saw them was also the exact day my consciousness was able to form a connection with Ermin's soul. I Even see. after I opened my eyes and stopped meditating, my heart was still pounding, and my mind was racing with all the knowledge that I had touched. And at that very moment, I suddenly noticed a small figure at the opening of the cave. In my curiosity, I began to walk over to the creature. They must have already been used to me living in the cave, because they didn't seem to mind me approaching them. They just kept doing whatever they were up to. It wasn't until I crouched down next to them that they suddenly realized that I could see them. Right. Oh! And then? And then, I had a dream. By the time I came to, they were nowhere to be seen. I was convinced they'd never show up again. But, sure enough, I saw them nearby a few days later. And they weren't alone. I feel like they aren't as afraid of me as the first time I approached them. But I never would have expected them to save me. What fascinating creatures. Sounds like a great neighbor. Yes, no doubt about that. By the way, Tainari mentioned in his letter that you had questions for me regarding Ermansoul. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sounds like just drinking juice still isn't quite enough for my stomach. Well, if somebody hadn't dropped the food earlier... Anyway, looks like we'll need to prepare something ourselves. Besides, Paimon's getting hungry too. Let's eat first and talk about Ermansoul later. Okay. Alright, we're up, Traveler. Today's menu will feature sweet madame and a radish veggie soup. Oh yeah. I love them, Hypatia. They're our specialties after all. Oh yeah, sweet madame's got it down to a fine... Mm, sounds good. Yeah. I've never tried any dishes from other nations before. I certainly look forward to it. It's been so long since I've had a decent meal, too. To be honest, the last time had to be when Tainari came to visit. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Make box lunch. Okay. You cook up some dishes over the fire. Oh, we don't actually have to make them. Okay. All done. Let's use the empty box that Tainari gave us since we already watched it. Oh, it smells amazing. And the box is a nice touch, too. Let's go serve this up and start eating with Hapasia. Are you already finished cooking? Mmm, smells delectable. I'm truly thankful whenever I can enjoy a proper meal like this. Uh, cooking really isn't my forte. Okay, have the little lunchbox. After a delicious meal together, you tell Hapasia about connecting with... Even Herman though Saul. everything you mentioned was in Tainari's letter, it's still hard to believe you were able to connect with Ermansoul immediately after smelling spirit born eel for the first time. It took me nearly three years before I could do so. Wow, something. okay. And everyone at the academia even lauded me as a genius. You should know that some researchers spent their entire lives without ever successfully connecting with Ermansoul as you have. Wow, okay. So why does allow people to connect to Ermansoul. The ingredients used to make spirit borneo primarily consist of plants created by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. 
These special ingredients are conducive to heightening our senses to the Dendro Archon's power. Right. Since the root of the Dendro Archon's power lies within Ermansoul, we can occasionally tap into her powers to peer into the depths of the Earth. Okay, I think I understand. Naturally. Anyone who can establish a connection with Ermansoul in their first ever attempt must be a person of great understanding. Hmm. Makes sense. But Paimon's got a question. Why was he sensitive to the smell of those plants for such a long time? Right. That was primarily due to his body's unique constitution. Stimulated by the incense, he could perceive the Dendro Archon's power and experience the sensory overload. <laughs> Hence the adverse reactions. Right. Taking in any scent similar to the ingredients of Spirit Borneo would cause adverse effects. Not to worry though. It appears you've already fully recovered. Technically, your body should still be sensitive to the powers of the Dendro Archon. But unless you're using intentional meditation techniques, the scent of Spirit Borneo should no longer trigger such reactions. Whew. Well, that's a relief. I must admit, I am quite envious of your abilities. Even if it meant suffering from pounding headaches for the rest of my life, I'd consider it worthwhile so long as I could connect with Ermansoul at will. Whoa! You're really serious about this whole thing, aren't you? <laughs> I am a researcher, after all. As a member of the Ritawes Darshan at the Academia, oh. my main area of research is the stars and their connection to the fate of living beings. But there is still so much we don't know, especially regarding the mysteries that lie in the starry skies. Oh wow, so you'd get along with Mona then. Which is why I must turn to the all-knowing Ermansoul for answers. Okay. If only my perception wasn't so limited. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee that my every attempt to attune with Ermansoul will be successful, or that doing so will leave my consciousness intact. I am currently in the stage of training known as Satyavada Life. Many researchers in Sumeru have lost their minds while seeking to attune with Ermansoul during this stage. Sages have said that Ermansoul contains divine knowledge, and touching such knowledge without the proper preparations and abilities will only lead to one's mind caving in on itself. Wow, okay. That's why we meditate alone. We need to ensure that our minds will be calm while minimizing the possibility of involving anyone else. Wow, so knowledge from Ermansoul can be super dangerous. Aren't you afraid of the risk, Hapeja? Right. Of course I do. Especially during nights that are pitch black with no moonlight and dead silent without even the sound of insects. However, I've been feeling better as of late. I don't get as scared anymore knowing that I have a little neighbor living nearby. I believe that being able to see them is a sort of blessing from the Dendro Archon. <laughs> but what's strangest of all is that they're clearly an envoy of the God of Wisdom herself. And they have the curious power to make people dream. Yeah, that's very powerful. If someone sees you and then you can just go... And then they just fall into a, like, deep trance where they start, like, hallucinating and dreaming. And you could just run away. Like, that's very powerful. What's so strange about that? It doesn't sound so out of place for a divine being, does it? Well, it's strange because nearly nobody in Sumeru can ever dream. Ah, huh. is that true? Really? Yes. Well, to an extent. Only children can dream in Sumeru. Adults, however, never do. What? The sages say that wisdom implies rationality, but that which occurs in dreams is often neither rational nor logical. Reminds me of the dream I saw from the Aranara. It was a big chaotic mess. Yes. If one struggles with anxieties, those emotions could influence their dreams. Oh, okay. Aether has anxiety. Uh, confirmed. The fact that the people of Sumeru do not have dreams is seen as a blessing by the sages. They believe that Greater Lord Ruka Devata, the God of Wisdom, is keeping us away from the foolish delusions you encounter in your sleep. Okay. I was born into a family of scholars in Sumeru City. Ever since I was a child, my parents would always tell me that I'll know I've grown up once I stop dreaming. Okay. I studied hard, enrolled as a student in the academia, and went on to become a researcher. <sighs> sure enough. I never dreamed again. Wow, okay, that's that's really interesting. But then, on the day I scared the little Aranara, Arinara. I suddenly saw a dream again. It was incredible. 
Though I don't exactly remember what I saw, I clearly recall the feeling. I suddenly felt like I was a child again. Sages, no dream equals smart, but the Dendro Archon's power is dreaming, bruh. <laughs> it's a good point, yeah. Back then, I was foolish and ignorant as any youth would be, but I was free of fear. Maybe dreaming isn't as bad as we've made it out to be. Right. <clears throat> Just be sure not to speak of this if you travel to Sumeru City. They'll look at you as if you've lost your mind. So, do you have any thoughts about the things he saw when he connected with Ermensul? Sorry. I'm afraid I don't have any answers as of now. Hmm. All I can say is that what you saw is a memory contained within Ermensul itself. Hmm. World forget me. What could that possibly mean? Uh... If only I could ascend past Safiyavada life and begin Paripurna life, I might have some more answers for you. Ah, if you two are ever in the area again, please be sure to come and see me. Okay, thanks. Oh, well, I wish you luck on your endeavors. There's no need to be thanking me. You two are my saviors. Besides, I'm already looking forward to tasting some more of your cooking. <laughs> you continue chatting before settling down for a good night's rest. Hapasia is alright, and had the chance to ask her some questions, Paimon thinks it's about time to head back to Gondarvaville. Cool! Oh my god, okay, this, so yeah, that whole hallucination we had with the Abyss Herald was a dream. Interesting. Talk to her? She has a lot more dialogue. Heading out, I see. If there's anything else you'd ever like to ask about, you know where to find me. Okay, about dreams. Even though that little neighbor of mine was able to induce a state of dreaming, I doubt they were able to control the actual contents of the dream. Right. The end of your dream seemed quite terrifying. Perhaps there's something that's troubling you deep inside? Not to worry, though. I'm sure you'll be able to handle whatever comes your way in the real world. Aww. As someone from Sumeru who cannot dream, I needn't ever worry about nightmares. But lately, I've started to feel that I'm somehow missing something without dreams. <laughs> It's a little hard to explain. Okay. About Ermansol. Sumeru researchers use Spirit Borneal to assist them in connecting with Ermansol to extract knowledge from it. Though the process can be risky, we believe that the knowledge gained is worth it. Unfortunately, I cannot help you understand your dream. At least not yet. I'm still learning how to tune to the depths of Ermansol myself. Okay. I hope that I'll be able to ascend past Satyavada life and gain deeper insights. About your unusual neighbor. I've heard local children here in the rainforest speaking of fairy-like creatures. But I'm from Sumeru City and have never heard of such things when I was a child. Perhaps this is because I had a very strict upbringing. My parents would seldom allow me to play with other children. I hmm. doubt they'd ever believe me if I told them about my little neighbor out here. And speaking of my little neighbor, I think they can somehow sense when Tainari is coming to visit me. Okay. I've noticed on several occasions that as they're playing under the trees, they'll suddenly tense up and scamper away for no apparent reason. Shortly after they do this, Tainari always shows up here. Okay, I mean, it would make sense if they're, like, connected to nature. Hmm. Perhaps I should ask Tainari about this the next time I see him. Or he just smells funny. Take care. Do remember to come visit any time you're in the area. I would be happy to chat with you. Where does it want us to go now? Up to the main building again? Yes. Think about it, Tainari. Refusing to join is tantamount to burying your head in the sand. I understand that you're a forest watcher and that it's your duty to combat the effects of withering zones. Whoa. But isn't it evident that such work is not a lasting solution to the problem? I love these guys, like their robes. They look really cool. As Sage Kaje clearly stated, your presence and guidance in Sumeru City is pivotal in finding a cure for Ermansul. How could you possibly refuse? Keep your emotions in check, Gulam. Let's at least listen to Tainari's reason for declining. We're here to invite him to the academia, not to cause a scene. Oh, I love his voice. Wow. Sage Kaje, I am truly honored that you came here in person. But I'm afraid I must still decline your invitation. Kaje, okay. I am merely a forest watcher. How could the great minds of the Haravatat have any need of someone like me? 
<laughs> well, it turns out that your refusal letter had some implications on your master's reputation. He is a renowned sage of the Immorta, after all. So now I've come here in his stead. I see. Huh. And I figured that given his temper, he would come here and berate me personally. Tainari, your master is an integral part of this effort. And now he requires your assistance. His mustache. Yeah, it's like zigzaggy. Yeah, it's cool. And what exactly does my master need of me, Sage Kaje? You'll know once you've arrived in Sumero City, that is. Oh. And how long will I be required to stay? Uh, there's no definite answer as of now. Do you mean to tell me that despite coming all the way here to Kandarvaville, you still can't answer the questions I laid out in the letter to my master? If that's the case, then I'm afraid I cannot give you a definite answer either. Oh! Tainari, but you... Ah, uh, so be it. Come, Gulam, we're leaving. Can I come with you? I want to come. Let me go. Whoa! I'm loving them outfits. Uh, Tainari, what was that all about? It's nothing. Some people from the Academia wanted me to go to Sumeru City to assist them with a project. But I had to refuse on account of all my responsibilities here. But all that can wait. How did things go with Hapasia? It was quite the eventful trip. But the main thing is that she's safe and sound. She answered a bunch of questions for us, too. Very good. Now that the Traveler has made a full recovery, there shouldn't be any reason for you to tarry here longer. I assume you will be heading to Sumeru City, correct? Yes. That's right. We want to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali and ask her for advice. Um, do you have any idea on how we can find her? Yeah, do you know how we could find the Archon? <laughs> Sorry. I'm afraid I don't have any advice for you there. Well, do you at least know anyone we can try asking in Sumeru City? Hmm, let me think. My trips to Sumeru City have been fairly short, and most of my acquaintances are researchers. How about this? I'll write you a letter of introduction that you can give to a researcher I know. Okay. He's from the Amorta Darshan and is adept at gathering information. Asking him might prove worthwhile. Okay. Also, when you enter Sumeru City, you'll probably end up receiving something like this item here. I'm not sure if it will ever come in handy for you, but maybe you can give it a try. Oh? What is it? It's called an Akasha Terminal. Oh? It's a tool produced by the Academia that utilizes the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Some say that this very item is the basis of Sumeru's reputation as the City of Wisdom. Okay. Needless to say, this device and its usage fall under the Academia's expertise. So I'll leave it to them to show you how to use it. Right. Great! Next up, Sumeru City! Uh, oh, but wait... Before that. Yeah, we need to say goodbye to Kule. That's right. Tainari, we have something important to say to Kale before we Kale. Leave. Is she doing better now? <laughs> yes, she's doing much better. After being confined to her bed all this time, I thought a little walk would do her some good. Last I saw her, she was taking the path towards the north crossing. Okay. She knew you two would be leaving soon, so she must have wanted to see you off. Thanks, Tainari. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Farewell. And good luck to you both. Thanks. Oh, I'm excited. I really want to see the city chat. There you are, queen. There you are. Ah, I've been waiting for you two. I, uh... Well, uh... <sighs> Never okay. mind. I guess I should just wish you two a safe and successful journey. Thanks for waiting here just to see us off, Kale. We're headed to Sumeru City. Yeah, please take care of yourself. We'll be back to see you again soon. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. My condition won't be getting in the way of my duties. I want to be a forest ranger after all. Aww. It's up to me and the others to protect the rainforest here. And, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I should have told you both about my condition when we first met. I just wanted you two to treat me as a normal friend. Aww. Not some girl that needs your sympathy. But I guess now I understand that the most important thing is for friends to be genuine with one another. Mm -hmm. There's no need to apologize, Kale. 
We should be thanking you for trusting us enough to be your friends and sharing your past with us. We're probably still gonna worry about your condition, but that's because we're friends and we care about you. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, before you leave, I have something for you. Oh? Oh? What is it? It's my recipe for peanut pockets. <gasps> I told you that I'd give you a copy, remember? Yes! My handwriting is a little, uh, messy, so please don't laugh. Yay! Thanks, Kale. Now we can eat those scrumptious little pitas whenever and wherever we like. Nice! I hope that whenever you eat them, you'll both remember your time here in Gandarvaville. Of course we will. Well then, I, Trainee Forest Ranger Kale, bid you both farewell. Please visit Gandarvaville again. The rangers will always be ready to assist you here. I hope you have a safe trip to Sumeru City and get to meet the Dendro Archon there. How are you feeling now? I'm much better now. I'll be back on patrol again starting tomorrow. That's good. Even though I'm not quite ready to help Master clear the withering zones yet, there are still plenty of other tasks for me to handle. Oh, and Traveler, if you ever see Amber again during your travels, please don't mention my illness to her, okay? Okay. Amber knows about my case of Elazar and what's happened in my past, but I haven't told her about my condition getting worse. I guess I just don't want her to worry about me. If the need arises, I'll tell her about it myself. All right, we understand, Kale. About pe uh, Peter Pockets. <laughs> kind of hard to believe that Master Tainari can cook, isn't it? His culinary techniques are very polished, but his taste is a little, uh, unusual. It's not really his fault, though. He just has a sensitive tongue and nose, Aww. so he prefers much lighter flavors. The last time I went a little too heavy on the spices for my pita pockets, Master started having a sneezing fit. <laughs> of course, I never heard the end of it after that. Oh. <gasps> Do I need a bow for that? I feel like I need a bow for that. Did that do something? <gasps> yeah! Oh, dude, that's so cool! What is this? Tree stump house. Knock, knock! <sighs> Traveler's here. Hello? Climbing up. Hello? I hear a shiny thing. Oh, there it is. Okay. Hello? Wow! What was that? What just exploded? Hello? Ow! <laughs> what is happening? Dendro barrel? Oh, was that what it was? I didn't even see it. <gasps> Dendro crystal flies. And the teleport waypoint. Let's go. We've got a viewpoint. Oh my god, so much. Wow. And there's the chasm. Dude, that looks so weird to see it from this side. What is that? Oh my gosh. Okay. That's so cool. Is that the city, actually? Oh, it is. Look at these guys. Oh my god, they're snoozing. Hi. Are you aggressive? I hope not. Can I pet you? Can I boop snoot? So this exploded. Oh, there's the dendro barrel. Okay. A two. Dendro is just hay fever, but weaponized. A two. <laughs> is that a dendro specter? We're going to the big city, chat. Look at that. Oh, I want to see the academia so bad. Wow. Oh, wow. That is so cool. They have earpieces in? Did I notice that? City. <sighs> we finally made it. Oh, did you see that? When those people entered the city, something on their heads lit up. Yeah, they have like earpieces. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Hello? Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. Oh, is that like a profile thing? Is that what their earpieces are? But no need to worry. That won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Oh, AirPods. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. Right. It's our beloved greater lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy. A treasure trove of collected knowledge. So you just steal all of my brain power and my brain juices? 
After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha Terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. What? Okay, well, it's basically a mobile phone, but wow, that's cool. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Ormos. Okay. Oh, so this is the thing that Tyler Basically was the internet. about. It sounds pretty amazing. Yeah, Tavat has invented, or Sumeru has invented, the internet. <laughs> you two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. Thank you. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leaf. <laughs> Quick theory. Don't know if this has been confirmed or already, but you know how in the Gapple they were trying to make a device that could mind control people and it didn't really work, or at least it backfired? I feel like this is the way that they're going to do it. They're going to hack into these and because these are connected to everyone, everyone's going to become controlled through the device. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and Maybe. say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. Doodad. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Did Paimon get one as well? May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Ta-da. Oh, she did. Oh, that's so cute. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know. And bam! You get it. Oh, that'll come in real handy. Exactly. That in real life. is the power of the Akasha. And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City. May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide. Why, thank you. Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm, seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm. Uh, huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. The Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. No results found. Same thing happened to me. Oh, come on. Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. We know where she is, so why don't we just go there? Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. Okay, let's try asking the Akasha something else. Uh, maybe uh, I'll indirectly find more information. Okay. Oh, smart idea. What are you going to ask it? Let's think about the lesser lord, I guess. Some knowledge began to trickle into the into my mind for a moment, but there wasn't really anything that I didn't already know. Okay. Hmm. You too? Well, glad it's not just Paimon. Hmm, okay. Think about the greater lord? Many bright dots of light appeared in my mind. I probably need to calm my mind to focus more to understand what they mean. Feelings of affection, intimacy, nostalgia, sadness, and anxiety also come to my mind. It seems to be what the people of Sum Sumeru felt about the departed Archon. Uh-oh. Paimon's getting all teary-eyed all of a sudden. It feels like the people of Sumeru really miss their Archon. Hmm. Why doesn't it answer my question? A vague thought suddenly comes to mind. The Akasha doesn't un- conditionally respond to everyone every query also even if the same query is requested by multiple people the akasha still imparts knowledge based on each person's identity age experiences and other demographics huh. could it be because we're outlanders and we've only just arrived in sumeru you know 
Maybe we're not qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. I mean, we're just not in the algorithm. <sighs> well, seems no matter which way we try, we can't find anything that'll lead us to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. Right. He's from Sumeru and even has a position in the academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. Right. That would make sense. Let's see. Nice. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Let's head over and have a look. Hopefully he's at home. Wow. Okay, hello? Hello, are you Rohawi? Yes, that's me. Can I help you? Great, you see, Tainari sent us here and... What? Tainari? I... Please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and maybe the data didn't produce the most convincing results, but... Uh, I think you misunderstood us. We're not here to discuss academics. Here, this is a letter from Tainari. Oh, let me see. Oh, Ooh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. Oh. So you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. So what is it you two would like to know? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Okay. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. Hmm. What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? Uh, I'm almost sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Hmm. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. Okay. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Sorasthana or made a public appearance. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. <laughs> really, Paimon? The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. <laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. And besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha and things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Right. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages, come find me. Okay, so by area of expertise, you meant this kind of stuff. Hey, come on. This is a survival skill at the Academia. Oh, Paimon's expectations were pretty low, but this is so low, it's like digging holes in the dirt. So what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here. Mm. There's still one other person we know. Huh? Like who? Adastra Abazas, Catherine! Oh, you're right! Catherine! I forgot about the Catherine! Avengers Anything else you'd like to ask about? The six great sages? Sage is the highest rank for an academia researcher. Okay. Since the institution's founding, each of the six great sages represent the finest mind and leader of their respective darshan. One grand sage is chosen from among the six sages to serve as the head of the academia. Right. The current one is Sage Azar of the Ratawahis darshan. Since ancient times, the sages have contributed immensely to Sumeru. The widespread usage of the Akasha is thanks to their hard work. Anything else you'd like to ask about? Uh, the relationship between the sages? <laughs> I just knew you'd be curious about that. 
Although the six Darshans conduct research in different disciplines, their sages frequently interact with one another when managing academia affairs. In the Immorta, our leader is Sage Nafis. His temper is legendary. We researchers are terrified of him. Oh. And even the Grand Sage gives him some leeway. He hasn't shown his face lately, though. Rumor has it that he's currently involved with some major project. Thankfully, he's been so busy that I was able to publish a paper. Whoa. Whoa! <gasps> New instrument. Yes. We've got a restaurant here, too. Oh, my gosh. It looks fantastic. Here she is! Catherine! Error. I'm Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Hi! Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurers Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. Okay. Will Catherine know? I guess Catherine knows all, right? I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Okay. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. Oh? In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. The Aramites? They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Corps of Thirty? What a weird name. Hmm. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. Okay. Asfant, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty, maintains good relations with the Adventurers Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the core of 30's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. Okay, thank you so much, Catherine. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. Hmm. All right, off to the Citadel of Regzar we go! Okay. Wow, okay, we're really walking through Sumeru's, uh, or Sumeru City. Wow. Whoa, what is this? Oh, wow, okay. What is this? And there's the reputation thing. Okay. Welcome. The Adventurers Guild told me to expect you to. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Asfand. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Aw. Wait. Seriously? That's it? <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. Oh, wow. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm, okay. Oh? Why's that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late, greater Lord Rugadavada. Right. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Okay. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance. 
And the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Hmm. Really? Aww. After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Right. Ha. But who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osman. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurers Guild. Oh, thank you. Okay. After leaving the citadel of Rexar, you questioned several people in the city. <sighs> Seems Osfond was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, If the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Hmm. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Cue that person. Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that was too predictable. <laughs> huh? How are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I've wow. I've introduced myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Wow! Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Okay, what well, sort of legend? Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then, the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. Right, okay. She said, Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun, and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. What an amazing story. Yeah, thanks for the story. Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Right. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. Uh, so did you two know that, uh... Uh-oh. Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Okay. I think it has something to do with those people over there. It looks like they're searching for someone. Hmm. Dunyarzad was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? Ugh. This stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now! Okay. <sighs> Let's see if we can get rid of them. Then we can catch up with Dunyarzad! Hey, have you two seen a brown haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her. <laughs> that should keep him busy 
for a while. Let's hurry up, find Junior's eye. All right. Whoa, the music! All right, we're coming. There you are, Junior's eye. We thought you might have been long gone by now. Oh, it's you two. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. Uh-oh. Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! <laughs> no, wait. I, uh, my body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. Your body? What? How about we find some somewhere to hide? Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. Ooh. <sighs> we made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, dear. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> Bye, Bonnie. Are you okay? My lady, who are these two? Hello? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. Wait, so she's one of them? I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Well, now I don't want to. Wait a sec. Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? Yeah, right? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. Right? My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> hey, Dunyarzad already said she doesn't want to go back. Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Then explain. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much more do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time and I'll get that much. Wow. My lady, this isn't about Mora. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but my conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt ya. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. They still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they're like re-explaining it for obviously us so we know kind of what's going on. But I'm glad that they've like said, wait, wait you know this already. <laughs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to, because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. Oh? This is my life and my last chance, so I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Fair enough. Thank you, Dia. Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. <laughs> Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. Oh my gosh. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, 
Here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Half, okay. Okay, deal. Yay, looks like they've reached an understanding. That was easy. <laughs> um, are you okay? I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Sure. Sure. After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Okay. Wow. The music, dude. Ha! Well, if it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. Ha! <laughs> Don't you find that kind of work boring? Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it, huh? Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? <laughs> we don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. Oh, No need to break the bank. We'll eat whatever you order. Don't worry about it. We'll pay for your- We'll pay for our own food. Wait, we're paying for ourselves now? Aww, Paimon kind of wanted to try something fancy, but we aren't exactly loaded. Loaded. So Paimon will settle for something ordinary. How about our coconut charcoal cakes? What? They're our signature snack, and they run cheap. Look. Other customers over there are eating some now. Ooh! Uh, they look kind of burnt and dry. Uh, Paimon will pass. <laughs> Picky Paimon? Now that's a first. <laughs> but you've cooked slimes before, that's also true. Hey, come on! Paimon has personal preferences too, you know. Mm-hmm. After ordering, you continue chatting with... Oh, I can't remember. We asked a lot of people when we first arrived. And almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Oh. Huh? Really? Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends. And my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. Wait, does she have... I forget what it was called. Was it like Elzer... Elzerid or something? Has she got the same illness? My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Elazar, that was it, right? Yeah. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. Oh, wow. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Whoa. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I know everything about you. Really? Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning, and that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow, you really do know everything. Junior is odd. Is there anything you want? What? Not really. I, I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. And, uh, 
Can you make my illness go away? Oh. I'm sorry. But I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Then, can you be my friend? After that, the voice said, Okay, I'll be your friend. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel. Deserts and all of Tevat. Okay. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. Right, and that voice was the same voice at the end of the the Gapple, the Golden Apple Archipelago. So, yeah, which we, we've been led to believe it's the Dendro Archon. So, yeah, it was Lesser Lord Kusanali. Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world. Nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. Right. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus Festival for her. What's the Subzerus Festival? It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday, which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rukadabata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. Okay. I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. But because of the Academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukudabata. But when it comes to the Subzerus festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukadabata's death. So they're reluctant to celebrate it. Aww, but that's awful. Mm. It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. Right, so people really don't like talking about it. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the Subzerus Festival to this day. But I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Okay. Hold on, my lady. Does this friend happen to be Nilu, the one who sends flowers to the estate? Yes, that's her. Hmm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much more prepared, so I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Sure, that's quite the trip though. I'll carry you. Okay. No, that would be too much, even for you. Oh right, because of a condition, right? You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. Oh, can we also come along? But of course. And Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. The festival was mentioned way back in 1.4 by a Sumeru researcher in the Mosthead Library. Oh, really? So maybe I did talk to that person. Because I do remember talking to a researcher from Sumeru in the library. Excuse me? And then down in here. Wow! The Grand Bazaar. Whoa! Oh, wow. Hello? Uh, sorry I'm late, Milu. Oh, doing your Zod. It was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home, but you made it in the end. Who is this? Uh-oh. But if Dia's here, that means you got caught, right? You could say that, uh, but everything worked out. She's on our side now. <laughs> uh, not completely. Oh, 
And who are these two? I love her outfit. Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So you're followers from another land? Uh, uh, truthfully, no. <laughs> yes. I assume this is going to lead to the same thing, but yeah. That's wonderful. You two absolutely mustn't miss the Sabzerius Festival. So what happens if he would have said no? By the way, Dunyarzad, we've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular. Thanks to your generous contribution. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough Mora? Uh, probably? But don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. There were different dialogues. Oh, wow. Wow, this place is amazing. Not bad. <laughs> Last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. Shin Yin, when you at? The stairs were nothing. A little while ago, we discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. Yeah, well, that's understandable. We reported it to the academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. Mm, why didn't anyone come to handle it? Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. Right. The academia looks down on performers like us. They okay. probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Thank the Dendra Archon for doing your Zod. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much needed makeover. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. I'm excited. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Oh. Milu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? She'll be dancing the dance of Subzeros. The most important performance at the Subzeros Festival. She's a dancer. That's so cool. Dunyarzad, have you told them the origin of this holiday? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. Okay. Then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. According to legend, the Sabzerus Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. Yes. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Ruka Devata's birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Some of the gods got drunk. One started Can we guess playing her? music, and the Greater Lord started singing. So the Goddess of Flowers began to dance. As she danced upon the grass, countless beautiful Padisaras began to bloom wherever she stepped. Wow. Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored, Oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. Wow, sounds like they had a great time, yeah. Of course they did. When people mention the gods, they always think of the Archon War. But Sumeru's gods also had happy times. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the Goddess of Flowers looked. Wow, okay. It looks really nice. Though we're just tiny people compared to the Divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. Aww. Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the Dendro Archon. I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. <laughs> they symbolize the goddess of flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Aww. Yeah. The Greater Lord brought forth Padisara's in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. Thinking about the Goddess of Flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. If my stage were anything like that, uh, I'd be thrilled if I had just two real Padisaras on the stage. Uh, so, Traveler and Paimon, what do you think? Interested in the Sabzerus Festival? Will you two be coming? 
Uh, yes. All of Lesser Lord Kusanali's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. Ooh, Paimon thinks that's a great idea! Oh yeah. You sure it's not because you just want in on the fun? You sure it's not because you want to watch Nilo? I can't remember how they said it. Dance. Of course Paimon wants to watch. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So how about we all attend the sub Zeros festival together? Oh yeah, sounds like a plan. Dunyarzad, let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler and Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Alrighty. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the sub Zeros festival. In that case, we'll take a look around. Alrighty, let's do it! Ooh! Oh, I'm excited! Okay, walk around the Grand Bazaar. Hello? Is this going to be Kamari? Whoa! What's with your yellow hair? And why do your clothes look so funny? Are you an outlander? Maybe. Did you know that the Sab Zeros Festival is about to happen? There will be loads of fun things to do at the festival. But the best part is when Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, passes out candy to everyone! Ferris? Srimati? Ah, dancing at the sub Zeru's festival. You know, I also danced when I was younger. As a child, I even asked my grandmother why we performed the dance for the Lesser Lord when it was originally done to honor the Greater Lord. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. And Lesser Lord Kusanali is too. Mm -hmm. If the Goddess of Flowers ever knew Lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her too. Right, okay. The Sub Zeru's festival has been losing its appeal over the years. Hmm. That is, until a wealthy benefactor stepped in this year and brought the festival back to life. I heard she forked out a lot of Mora to make it all happen. Aww. Daya? Daya? Huh. Daya? Daya? Revamping the stage for the festival couldn't have been easy, that's for sure. I bet this year's festival will be one to remember. I don't know much about the Grand Bazaar, but I do know that the residents here have a penchant for song and dance. <laughs> Two things that the academia doesn't particularly approve of. I can imagine. Oh, and the perfume sold around here is a lot better than what you'll find elsewhere. The fragrances are longer lasting and they're gentler on your skin and... Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard at least. <laughs> Farhad? Things are really shaping up and there's a buzz around the festival this year. We're expecting people from all over to come by this year and buy things during the festivities. Don't be fooled into thinking that Sumeru City has the best of everything. Some festival snacks are only offered here in the Grand Bazaar. Okay. And when it comes to musicians, dancers, or singers, the Grand Bazaar's got the best of the best. Sure, those folks at the Academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? True. Hello? Nilu, your outfit looks amazing. It does. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? Wow, did you sew all that yourself? Uh-huh. Sewing is a fundamental skill for everyone in the theater company because we make all our own costumes. Did you know that Mr. Zubair not only can make costumes, but props too? Ooh. <laughs> I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off that crown over there. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> May I? Of course. The legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head. So this crown was made to reflect that. Ah. Oh, Dunya Zod, you look absolutely stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. Catherine can move? Huh? Catherine Law? What? Huh. Come to think of it, Paimon's only ever seen her behind the counter at the Adventurers Guild. 
This is the first time we've ever seen her taking a break. That's sauce, dude. Hey, Catherine. Error. 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 <laughs> She's just smoking out of the ears. Error. Error. Hmm? Oh, hey. It's the Traveler and Paimon. What's shaken? What's shaken? Uh? Whoa. Break time Catherine sure sounds a lot less formal than usual. Paimon was still waiting for her to say Ad Astra Abyssosk. Sure. <laughs> Standing behind the counter at the Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. But saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. But take you two for example. You travel across to Vat to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. Well, we enjoy traveling across to Vat and all that. But we're mainly looking for clues about his sister. Yes. You should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for aren't necessarily at our intended destination. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. Haven't we heard someone say something pretty similar recently? Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? I'm so confused. Are you also a fan of the festival? No. Particularly, uh? I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. Catherine has eyes everywhere, right? She's in every single nation. Because she, I mean, we, we, the law we learned about Catherine is that she teleports to where she, like, to get to the different nations. That's how she's everywhere. And we've also theorized, I know you guys have said that, like, she's spying on us. What if she's part of the Fatui chat? What if she's, like, learning? She has eyes everywhere. She sees everything. She's feeding the Fatui information. Oh, it looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. Alright, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild. Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you. I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro after all. <laughs> See you around. Why do you say that so casually? Hmm. There's something really different about Catherine today. Hey, traveler. Paimon. Hello. Oh, hey, Thea. What's going on? I've got something to tell you. My lady knows you're looking for ways to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. And she's been trying to come up with a way to help you. Well, I have an idea that might help. Okay. Are you serious? We'd love that! It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. Okay, what about Dunyazad? Uh, my lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Regzar. Okay. That was so random. That was so random. Why would Catherine just show up? She wasn't even interested. She's never done that, ever. Why would she randomly do it this time? I'm very confused. Uh, sorry, I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. Aww. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It, it's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Yeah, that's a blush if I've ever seen one. Ugh, listen, you two. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit-chat and head into the Citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. Okay. Oh, hey, Chief. What up? Ha, <laughs> Dia. What are you doing here? And well, well, 
Didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Osfan for more info. No kidding. Hmm. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Ruksha's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumero City to begin bolstering its defenses. So people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Okay. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Just recently, the Academia lost something. And there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. <laughs> I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. Let me fill you in. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. Right. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. Okay. You two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. Okay, sweet. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Is that foreshadowing? Are we going to meet someone there? Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, and even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, maybe you could head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. Okay, students of Academia, why would we do that? Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested, just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me. If you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Eremites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. Okay. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like, Retake Sumeru for the Scarlet King. Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. Oof. You bet they are. The Scarlet King's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Ridiculous. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandon their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Right. Thanks, Fia! And you too, Osfan! Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next. Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzerus Festival, so be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Okay, we won't forget it. Good. Then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. Sounds good.